Hey guys, this is Matt NES. So, probably one of the most requested videos that I have be told to me, at least in my circle of friends, is that they've all told me they want to see a GameCube-related video. So, why don't we take a look at my relatively small GameCube collection? Let's check it out. So we're going to take a look at my kind of smallish GameCube collection here. Um, one thing that you guys got to know is that GameCube's not my absolute favorite system of all time, just because I was kind of not gaming a whole lot during the sixth generation, but I'm willing to go back and take a look at some other GameCube titles to see if there's any hidden gems that I ended up missing, but today I'll show you what I have. Okay, first up we have Super Mario Sunshine. This is a game that I have definitely spoken to at length in other videos. Go ahead and check out my Unpopular Gaming Opinions to find out more in-depth uh, opinions on this game. But, long story short, this isn't one of my favorite Super Mario games, but it's still, you know, a relatively good time. Um, but this game right here actually wasn't uh, the game that launched with the GameCube. Instead, we have this game right here, Luigi's Mansion. This was definitely not what I was expecting to see as a launch title for a Nintendo system, because up till this point, we got, you know, the mainline next generation Mario game as a launch title, or sometimes even a pack-in game with uh, the concurrent system that it was released for. But yeah, like, this game is pretty infamous, you know, you walk around as Luigi, there's no platforming, it's all about exploration, busting ghosts, solving puzzles, and just, you know, finding out what happened to your baby brother Mario. And yeah, this isn't, like, one of my favorite games of all time, but I, I, I definitely like it. It's definitely kind of a cult favorite among gamers, but, you know, it's good, it's good. So this is one game that I am definitely not familiar with at all. This is Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. I keep hearing fantastic things about these games. I, I've never played any of the Paper Mario games because I, I've always had like kind of a dumb grudge with this game. Like, oh my God, like they're gonna have Mario RPG be followed up by like paper cutouts. Oh, that's so dumb and stupid. But you know, now I've definitely, like, moved on from that, and I'm definitely more willing to try these games out. Because I've, I've heard, especially this game in particular, that this is a fantastic RPG, and I want to try it out. I just haven't had the time to do it. So I'll definitely find time to do it at some point. Next up is a game that was controversial during the time, but now is considered a beloved game amongst most gamers. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. And this is a pretty good Zelda game. Uh, it's definitely not, like, in my top five Zelda games, but, you know, exploring Hyrule on the on the seas and stuff like that, you know, finding uh, treasures on islands and stuff like that. It's it's always been... It, it's been a fun time. I, I, I haven't revisited this game since it was um, launched originally on the GameCube, but I, I definitely had a good time with this. The game was definitely panned back in the day for having super bright, colorful, cartoony graphics, but, you know, people have kind of forgotten about that, and now it's an all-time classic. Kind of like another Zelda game that's, that had that same treatment, Cough, Cough, Majora's Mask. But, yeah, you know, like I said, I think this is a pretty good Zelda game. Not my favorite, but I like it a lot. This is a game that I only have a little bit of uh, history with. This is Zelda The Four Sword Adventures. Um, I don't have all the means in order to play this game, and I, I never really did. I tried out the single-player which is just kind of weird. It's it's like kind of an arcade kind of take on The Legend of Zelda where there's like different levels and stuff like that and like scores and stuff like that. Like, it's really odd. In order to play this game properly with uh, a bunch of people, you're going to need four players, at least one Game Boy Advance game with the Game Boy Advance link cable, plus, you know, some extra controllers. And it's, ju it's just a bunch of work in order to get this game up and running correctly. And it's just... It's just bizarre, man. I would like to try and get this game up and running and, you know, do the multiplayer properly before I kick the bucket, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see if that ever happens. So next up, we have more of a fan favorite. N not one of mine. Uh, this is Metroid Prime. Um, I did play through this game from beginning to end once. Um, I will say, guys, you know, if you guys didn't know, I'm visually impaired and... Uh, First-person view games, especially ones that involve platforming, have always been kind of a tough spot for me to play through. 
I did eventually struggle my way through this game, but honestly, like, when it comes to my favorite Metroid games, I have to still go with the 2D games. I, I do definitely feel like that there's a lot of strong um, uh, factors to this game. I will say that, like, the atmosphere in this game is very strong. Really great music done by Tommy Tellerico. It's just my dumb bias of being visually impaired that keeps me from, you know, having this be, like, one of my top favorite Metroid games of all time. I think I'm going to try and, you know, remedy some things. Like, maybe I can adjust my TV a little bit more in order to, you know, go through darker areas. You know, having the Morph Ball being in third-person deck actually does help out a little bit. Like, I travel throughout the game in Morph Ball mode than I do than just, like, walking around in first-person. That's how I actually got through this game the first time I played. But, yeah, you know, that's, you got to do what you got to do. Unfortunately, I don't own Metroid Prime 2 as of per the recording of this video. I do plan on getting it in my collection just because I do want to own all the Metroid games at some point. I, I do want to try and play through it at some point, but I don't know. We'll see. So this is another game that I never ended up playing. This is Star Fox Adventures. Um, weirdly enough, this isn't like your typical Star Fox game where you're riding around in a plane you know, shooting down stuff from the sky. Like, there is some of that in this game, but for the most part, this is actually a Zelda clone, believe it or not. You have Fox wielding a magic staff, and, like, there's this other Fox girl that's trapped in a crystal, and I don't know, man. This was a game that was supposed to come out on the Nintendo 64, and it was supposed to be a completely game that had nothing to do with Star Fox whatsoever, but, you know, Miyamoto kind of butted into uh, Rareware Studios and decided to say, hey... That Fox character kind of looks like Fox McCloud. You should turn that into a Star Fox game. And so they did? I don't know, man. This is really not what I wanted from a Star Fox game. But I've been hearing recently that this game is actually not too bad. And I've been hearing some rumblings around the internet that it's actually worth playing. Because this is a game that I, I never picked up on its own. I just remember hearing that this wasn't a traditional Star Fox game, so I just kind of stayed away from it. But... I don't know, I'll probably end up playing this game at some point. We'll see. The next game, however, is a little bit more in line of what Star Fox actually is. This is Star Fox Assault. This is still a little bit of a departure of what uh, Star Fox usually is, though. You still have a lot of the, you know, on-rails, uh, R-wing sections like you do in the classic games, and honestly, those are some of my favorite parts of this game. But most of the game actually consists of, like, these open-world, on-ground missions, which... You know, on paper sounds fun, but like, I don't know, man. I just feel like the, a lot of these uh, stages are a little bit monotonous. They kind of go on for too long. You have to like find where all the enemies are and it's a little tough to do that sometimes. Overall, I'd say that this game is like pretty decent, but it's definitely far from being, you know, a Star Fox 64 successor. Don't really have a lot to say about this one, guys. I never really played this series before. I've only seen, like, you know, a playthrough once on uh, the YouTube channel Chugga Conroy. Go sub to Chugga Conroy, by the way. He does great Let's, play Let's Plays. I never owned this game from back in the day, um, and still to this day, I've just never played it. I, I will give this game a shot at some point because it looks somewhat interesting. You know, RTS games are usually not my style. This is, like, kind of like an RTS light sort of kind of deal, but... I don't know. I'll, I'll try this series out at some point. I'm, I'm, I've, I've heard good things, so we'll see. Okay. Okay, guys, hear me out when I say this. This is actually kind of a fun game. Like, I, I know it's gimmicky and dumb and stupid, but definitely for the price that I paid, when I started getting into game collecting and when GameStop was trying to liquidize all their uh, GameCube stuff, this game was about $3.00. And the bongo accessory, I bought it for like a buck fifty. So for honestly like something like five dollars, this is actually like kind of a fun game. It's it's ridiculous and stupid. Like it's a platformer that you control with bongos, but it's fun. Like like it's definitely five dollars worth of fun. What is it like worth the price? You know, paying it in full back in the day when you you, you have like a fifty dollar game and like maybe. Like a $30 bongo accessories? Hell no. Hell no. But, like, this? For $5? Hell yeah. This is actually kind of a fun time. Donkey Konga, however, is kind of a little bit of a different story. This was also on the same kind of cheap end of GameCube games when I picked this up back in the day. 
I mean, this game is ultimately just, you know, a rhythm-based game with the Mongo accessories, and that, that could have been fun, but honestly, it's like the song selection that really hinders this game quite a bit. Ultimately, this is just a rhythm-based game using the Bongo accessories, and honestly, that should be, you know, a fairly good idea, but honestly, the thing that makes it suffer is the song selection. And you would think there would be stuff like, you know, classic Nintendo songs, like stuff from The Legend of Zelda, or Super Mario Brothers, or especially Donkey Kong Country, but instead we get things like Wheels on the Bus, and Smash Mouth, and all kinds of just really cringy stuff that was just from the early 2000s, and it's just not good. I don't know, man. I don't think I would bust this out at parties hardly ever, but, you know, it's worth it to have at least, like, this in the collection, I guess. It's it's a talking piece, I guess. Haven't played a lot of this game either, but I did definitely try it out here and there, and man, I will tell you, this game is definitely as hardcore and tough as people make it out to be. This is probably one of the hardest racing games that I've ever played in my life. It feels like you need to memorize this game and its tracks from like beginning to end to even stand a chance at getting to the top five, let alone like getting first place in any race in this game. And I will say the game's visuals um, and music like really pops for this game, and this game does have like, you know, fully voiced cutscenes and stuff like that, which is you know, okay at times, but honestly, like, if you're talking about what my favorite personal F-Zero game, I'm still gonna have to go with F-Zero F X on N64, but that's just me. Man, this game needs no introduction. Like, this is the Smash Bros. game that will not die. I've seen videos on the internet talking about how this game is still finding new tech and new meta in, like, 2019 or 2020, like, like, 20-plus years later. That's just nuts to me. But I will definitely say, guys, this is probably my favorite GameCube game, and it's probably one of the better Smash Bros. games that are out there, but, you know, I still gotta give it to Smash 4 and Smash Ultimate for being my personal favorite Super Smash Bros. games, but that's just me being, you know, honest with you guys. Oh, boy. I'm gonna get hate for this one. I don't like this Mario Kart game. I don't think it's my favorite one in the series at all. Like, I, I don't like the two-person-per-cart thing. I think it's dumb and gimmicky. I, I, I don't like it. I, I still prefer Mario Kart 64 and Mario Kart 8. Like, I, I know people love this game. I, I know there are some people who share my sentiments with this game, but, like, I don't know, man. People love this game, and I just don't see it, man. It's, it's, it's good. It's still Mario Kart, but, like, this is by far the most gimmicky Mario Kart out there, and that's saying something compared to something like Mario Kart Wii or something. I want to own at least one Mario Party game per console, and um, I haven't gotten a chance to play a lot of Mario Party games, but everyone online keeps saying Mario Party 4 is the best one, so this is the one Mario Party game that I have in my collection. Um, I, I don't want to, like, fill my collection up with a whole bunch of Mario Party games, so, you know, having one per console feels like a good uh, variety of Mario Party. I don't need to have, like, a bajillion in my collection. But, you know, I've heard Mario Party 4 is good. I, I want to start, like, actually playing Mario Party games with my friends, but I, I need to find the right group of friends to do it with, and, you know, you know how it is. This was a launch title for the GameCube. This is one of the first games I ever got for it, and this was at the height of my uh, Star Wars uh, obsession from back during the late 90s and early 2000s. And I will say, man, this is easily the best Rogue Squadron game. You get to do all the classic missions from uh, the original trilogy, which I just adore. And this is a really good freaking looking game, man, I will say. Like, even today... Like, when you have... I've seen uh, the uh, GameCube HDMI mods uh, that are out there and this game playing in for, uh, 480p, and this is still, like, an impressive-looking game, especially for, like, 2002, man. I will definitely be playing this game more in the future, especially when I get my own uh, GC HDMI adapter. Love, love, love this game. So now we're starting to get into some of the third-party games released for the system, and starting off, we're starting off on a high note here with these guys right here, the two Super Monkey, Monkey Ball games. These are great, great little games. They're challenging, they're fun, they're bright, colorful, 
These are fantastic games, and for whatever reason, Sega just can't get these games right like how they did with these first original two games, and I just don't know why. We had other good attempts in the past, like Super Monkey Ball Jr. on the uh, Game Boy Advance, Super Monkey Ball 3D on the 3DS, and even more recently, Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD on uh, the Nintendo Switch, but still, like, a lot of these games kind of miss the mark. But these two games right here, absolute classics on the system. I absolutely love these games. I could pop these games in any day and have a great time with them. And I'm super excited to get my uh, GameCube HDMI adapter uh, so I can play these games again. Next up, we have Beautiful Joe 2. I, <laughs> for whatever reason, don't have the original Beautiful Joe on GameCube. I, I very much want it, but um, this is definitely a fun little action game. Uh, done by uh, formerly uh, Team Clover from Capcom, who are now uh, Platinum Games. You know, you have a 2D uh, side-scrolling action beat-em-up. You can switch between both uh, Joe and Sylvia. Um, you use your powers to uh, beat up bad guys and to solve puzzles. Really good game. I don't know why I don't have the original game in my collection. I really, really want it. I, I still am trying to find it somewhere out there in the wild. It used to be super cheap. I only got this game for like three bucks, so it makes me sad that I can't find the original game. It, and, and I'm sure it's shot up in price real big, because I know that GameCube games are quite expensive nowadays, because now they're starting to be a little bit more popular. But uh, we'll see. Hopefully I can get the first game in my collection. Resident Evil. The remake. Yes. <laughs> uh, I got this game uh, during one of my birthdays, I want to say. I want to say it was... Um, like, 19th birthday? Something like that, I don't know. This is definitely up there when it comes to uh, some of my favorite personal Resident Evil games. Like, they really took the original game and gave it a huge facelift, you know, redid a lot of the acting, a lot of the cutscenes, you know, the environment still looks great to this day. I mean, you know, they even re-released this game on the PS4 and just did some minor HD touching up here and there, and the game still looks, like, fantastic to this day. So yes, definitely top three in the Resident Evil series for me. Love this game. Love this remake. This one, on the other hand, is one that I've kind of heard mixed things about. This is one I've never played personally myself. Um, I recently got this in a collection, if you guys have been actually, like, watching some of my videos as of late. I, I haven't had a chance to play it yet, because I, I don't have a way to hook it up to my current modern TV. But hopefully that'll soon change. Like I said, I heard a lot of the, you know, inventory stuff where instead of having, you know, the item boxes, the typical item boxes that you find in Resident Evil games, you actually have to put them down, backtrack to where you dropped it and pick it back up again. And that just sounds like a pain in the ass. And like you have uh, multiple characters that you have to cycle through. It kind of reminds me of Sweet Home on the NES. Like I've, I've brought that game up before in the past, but... Um, I don't know, we'll see. I, I, I'm going to play this game eventually at some point, and I'll have my own opinions on it then. So this is another game that I picked up uh, for the collection, but I just don't have the means in order to play it. This is much like uh, Zelda Four Swords Adventures, where you're going to need, you know, multiple GBAs, multiple link cables, you know, and at least, you know, someone that wants to deal with your quirky video game bullshit. <laughs> I definitely do want to play Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles at some point, but I don't even have even close the amount of things that you need in order to play this game properly. This is going to be another bucket list thing. You know, I know there's the remake coming out on Nintendo Switch and other platforms, but, you know, I hear that that's an online-only game and, like, you know, those have a shelf life, but something like this doesn't. I don't know. We'll see. And the very last game we have in the lineup is actually a dual pack. Uh, we have Pac-Man World 2 and Pac-Man Versus. When it comes to Pac-Man World 2, I've actually heard that this is a pretty decent 3D platformer. I, I have yet to play it, so this is another game that I actually want to try out once I get my GameCube HDMI adapter. I know I've mentioned that like a thousand times in this video. I, I probably will make a separate video on that, so keep, keep on the lookout for that, but... Yeah, I, I've heard good things about Pac-Man World 2, and I definitely want to play it. Pac-Man Versus, on the other hand, is much like Four Swords Adventures and Crystal Chronicles, where you need a GBA 
a GameCube GBA link cable and extra controllers in order to play this game. But unlike uh, Crystal Chronicles and Four Swords Adventures, I have a very, very deep desire to play this game with friends because I've heard that this multiplayer game is not so but so fun. Like, I've heard that this is like one of the best party games on the GameCube. I really, really, really want to play this with friends at some point. I just need to get the uh, Game Boy Link cable and then I'll be able to do this at some point. And like I said, the HDMI adapter that I've been like mentioning a few times in this video, again, I will make a video on that at some point soon. Um, but yeah, Pac-Man Versus, I, I definitely want to play this game at some point and share it with my friends. So that was my relatively small GameCube collection. You know, it's a little over 20 games. It's definitely not the most impressive collection, but that's what I have. Uh, you got to hear a little bit of my opinions on some of the games that I have. Um, and I'm definitely wanting to expand my GameCube collection. I just need to find them a little bit more often in the wild. If there are any GameCube games that you feel like are missing from my collection and you want to let me know, feel free to mention them down in the comments down below. And as always, if you've made it this far in the video and you're not yet subscribed, come on, man! Subscribe to the channel! Okay, that was a little cringy, but seriously, subscribe. <laughs> if you want to help me out even more, maybe consider, like, leaving a like, uh, following me on Twitter at the 8BitMattNES. Um, I also do game streams every Friday. Uh, check those out on the channel. But most of all, I want to thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Later.